Welcome to my channel. Today I'm making some tags for a tag exchange uh, with um, Kathy Berg and Colleen the Scrap Chick. So I've got all my tags done. I'm just going to do a quick video that uh, showed you how I made them all if you're interested. If uh, you want to skip ahead to the end, I do do a flip through of all the tags. My black cardstock, uh, six and a quarter by three and a smidge. Uh, the next part for the black and white tag is I took some Zen Tangle um, pages I had done. So I had this one and this one, and I scanned them into my computer and then I printed them out um, on white cardstock. Now I have an inkjet printer, so I sealed it after I printed it. I let it dry and then I sealed it with this Grumbacher workable fixative. Let that dry and then I proceeded to cut down each section into um, two and three quarters by five inches so it would fit on the tag, so something like that. And what I would do is, you know, one page I so might cut like here and here, and the next one I might cut here and there. Um, a few of them I did diagonal, so I would do like five, five, so I'd have a bunch of different styles of backgrounds. And you can see, especially on this one here where there was some empty space, I would just fill it in with some um, doodling. So for example, this one in this section here to make this pattern. Uh, this one I added this section. You can see they're all quite different. I'm just going to try to demonstrate how I um, added that. So here's an example. There's one where, you know, this one doesn't the right size, but just as an example, um, where I would doodle to fill it in. So sometimes I would use the pattern that was there. So let's say we want to continue this pattern. Do that. So these pit pens so it doesn't um, smear later. Uh, this is the smallest, well I have one size smaller but it's not working so I have this one here and um, when I did my original doodles a lot of them were with uh, ballpoint so their lines are a lot thinner. So I just do my best to maybe match it up and if it's not perfect that's okay. Often I just did a totally new random pattern. Just whatever I felt went with it. And so for example, just put some orbs just kind of floating in there. So I'll just color around those. So I'm trying to do this quickly, but normally I would um, I would just take my time. And um, I've always liked doodling, I've doodled a lot, and I've seen Zen Tangling, and um, I didn't really do Zen Tangle specifically, but uh, one day when I was watching Janet Merle Young on her stream, and she did some Zen Tangle, and she added shading, and I just thought, wow, that just, that just blew my mind, and I just kind of had to try it, and that's why I did those two pages, and I'll probably do more but it does take quite a long time. Here, I'm just gonna add just a little bit of a blippity-doo, like that, and on this one. And then, because this was previously shaded, um, to get it to match with the rest, I'm just using a gray alcohol marker. And I'm just gonna do, the original shading was done with um, like pencil graphite or something but um, because this is planning to go on a tag I wanted something that wouldn't smear so we'll just kind of add this to match I think I could do a little shadow here a little to make it look a little bit more 3d that's all the 
of tags. And for example, this one I think I cut on a diagonal. You can see the staple. So what I would do with that is I would just um, just touch it up a bit so it wasn't quite so noticeable. So for example, this I would color it in where the staple interfered. Or if there's areas where um, because of the crack of the book um, it didn't come out very clear, I would kind of go over it. So that kind of hides that. So I just make the edges. And then I just use a bit of um, Eileen's tacky glue on the back and then I would use a glue stick to spread it out and then I would glue it onto the tag. This one isn't the right size, I accidentally cut it two and a half instead of two and three quarters. So the other thing I've decided to do is to um, do a little bit of a border. So I'm just using a white gel pen. Um, tabby thing, I don't know what that's called. But we'll just kind of do a full one. And then the little dots, or I could do a little line, line the back. So I'm going to do that for all the tags now. I decided for my pop of color, I thought I'd use these shoes from this uh, shoe calendar that I have. Got that at a discount um, probably around April 2019, and it's kind of cool. It's pretty big, so it has one big shoe and then it has a bunch of smaller shoes. So I went for colorful ones like this one. I could have cut it out, but I didn't want to get rid of this big shoe. So I looked for ones that didn't have something behind. What I did is I just sort of held it up. So for example, this shoe here, when I hold it up to the light, I can see that there's nothing behind it here. So I could have cut that one out. So let's just do that. And again, I'm not really thinking what the cat's going to be doing with the shoe. I'm just cutting out colorful shoes. Cut out a bunch of shoes. Um, I tried to go for a bold color. So there's some red shoes. Um, and then I would fussy cut them. So just cut down right to the edge you can see and I didn't match them to any of the specific shoes I just sort of did them and I left the expressions blank so that I can fill that in once I know what shoe it's going with so here's just some examples um, so they're quite easy to do I use my elegant writer pen and I just draw a little cat so and they're just kind of like doodle cats so which way let's have this guy let's have him standing so after you have the tail done you just use a water brush or a paintbrush with water and you just kind of Fill it in. Um, and the thing with the Elegant Writers, what it does is it dries in different colors. You can blot it if you want to get more of the pink color. If it goes out, it doesn't matter because I'm going to be cutting them out. And you let that dry so you have a bunch of different poses. And then after I fussy cut my cats, I would decide, well, where's that cat gonna go? So this, you know, this cat could go with that shoe. Um, but I think I'm gonna put him here on this shoe, like that. So I've got a bunch of uh, shoes cut out and uh, cats cut out. Pretty much paired them together. Um, some of them still need a few little finishing touches. I didn't draw any of these cats to fit the shoe. I just kind of paired them up and then um, altered them. So this little guy gave him a little pause and I cut a little hole there so that he could be holding that little tassel. Here I used X-Acto knife to um, make a little slit in the shoe. And then you can 
can tuck your cat in there to make him sort of fit into the shoe. So that's one other idea. A little pause, give him some little... A lot of inspiration for drawing little cats, whimsical cats, is Terry Runyon. We want to add the tail behind there. And then just give his little ears. Because I don't want a fold, I don't want to crease him. Excess. That's one of the benefits of having the background already um, fixed with the that workable fixative. So that way if I get glue and I move it around, it's not going to smudge. I'm going to go ahead and glue um, a bunch of cats down and uh, we'll see where we end up. Okay, so I've got all my cats glued down with their shoes and now I'm going to just add some shading. I'm going to be using the um, Spectrum Noir, Ice Gray, 9 and 3, one's dark and one's lighter. And initially I thought I would just do underneath the shoe, but I just felt like um, I did a test one where I went all the way around the shoe and it um, just helped it pop out on the page a bit, just so it's less of a hide and seek kitty. <laughs> where you can actually see who the cat is. These aren't my favorite markers, but I um, don't want to use really good Copics on this because um, with the workable fixative on here, it could be a little rough. It could be a little bit hard on markers. So I just don't want to risk it. You know, Copic markers are not inexpensive. Um, these aren't either, but I got these ones on sale, so I'm less concerned about them. So we've got the dark gray. Okay, so I'm gonna use the light gray now just to soften it a little bit, I hope. Use just the um, the blender. What I want to do um, now that it's glued on is I'm going to put the whiskers on. I'm just going to highlight around there just to tie it in to the main part. So rather than having a shadow there, they're actually kind of almost have like a highlight. And again, I'm just using my white jelly roll pen. Because whiskers, we've got the shadow around the whole thing. And then I'm just gonna put uh, a coordinating pop of color around the frame for each one. So this one I'm gonna do in green, this one I'll do in pink, this one I'll do in teal. This one I would do in red, etc., etc. So let's just do that. And I'm using the blender to um, to soften it a little bit. So I'm just going to do each side, and then I'm just going to just so it's not like a too much of a harsh line. I 
I'm not an expert on alcohol markers. I am quite the novice, so that's why I would caution against using using a blender, uh, using your good alcohol markers on paper. That's a bit rough because I think it could probably wreck the nib. Although I suppose with Copics you can get replacement nibs, which is the advantage of something more expensive. Whereas these uh, cheap ones, the Artist Loft from Michaels, I don't think you can get um, replacement nibs for them. So my tags are all done. I wanted to seal them all with this satin um, varnish using a uh, just a sponge brush. I was finding that some of the Elegant Writer was smearing a bit, I think because the area was so small it didn't fully dissolve. So I ended up uh, respraying them with a fixative. I did um, this PBO fixative, uh, hoping it would be a bit more permanent. I still have to be careful uh, spreading the varnish. And then I decided to add a bit of bling on each one and a little ribbon uh, to the tag. So. Um, Thanks for watching this, and I'm just gonna just go through the tags and um, just show you them all. I did end up making more than 12 tags, so um, I'm gonna keep some to give to other people, or uh, maybe keep one or two for myself, and maybe send a few extra. Um, I'm gonna probably send more than 12 tags. So thanks for watching, and just gonna go through the tags now.